Hello, everyone, and welcome to the National Catholic College Admission Association and Jesuit Education Tour Virtual College Fair. We're very excited to have you participating in this event this evening. We have quite a few fantastic schools here with us to talk to you today. My name is Clarissa, and I'll be your facilitator today. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items I'd like to go over. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You also have a Q&A button on your screen for this event today. If you have any questions for any institution during the presentation, be sure to drop those into the Q&A. And also don't hesitate to mention a specific school if you have a question for one school and not just all of them. This is also just one of many sessions happening this evening. There is an additional hour after this, so definitely feel free to go back to the schedule to see what is being offered. This presentation is also being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash NCCAA. Now, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our first institution, which is Gonzaga University. Thank you. I'll just go ahead and share my screen. All righty. Uh, my name is Eli Jenkins. I am an admission counselor with Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington. I am a ZAG grad myself. Graduated two years ago with my degree in business. Um, Gonzaga University, We, like I said, we're in Spokane, Washington. We're a medium-sized Catholic Jesuit liberal arts university. So we're in true to the Jesuit tradition, a lot of hands-on learning um, and learning by doing. And then as a liberal arts school, we're also, uh, you're going to be dipping your toes in a lot of different academic programs, despite what you decide to study. We have around 5,000 undergraduate students. I like to say you'll never know everyone, but you'll never go anyone anywhere without seeing someone you know. 92% um, of our students come back for their second year at Gonzaga, speaking to our strong support systems that are in place. About three quarters will graduate in four years. 91% of our students over the last three years are um, in graduate school, um, employed in the military or in a competitive service program within six months of graduating. So you do have lots of opportunities when you leave. And then with an average class size of 23 and 11 to student one, uh, 11 to one student to faculty ratio, uh, you will be uh, I always like to say you're definitely an individual in your courses, very likely that your professor will also know your first name, something I always appreciated um, in my experience. And our academic programs are split up uh, from our five different schools on campus, ranging from the College of Arts and Sciences, which is humanities, natural sciences, social sciences and arts, to our business school, our ed school of education, and then our direct entry programs, which are engineering and school of nursing. For you engineers out there, we ideally look for um, calculus and physics to be cleaned completed by your senior year. And for our nurses, four years of math and four years of natural science. Please feel free to reach out to um, one of your admission counselor or myself um, if you have any questions about those. Um, we do have a very active community at Gonzaga. I think that you'll find if you know anyone that's gone to Gonzaga, if you um, know anyone that's currently there, and I can say this because I'm that person, we're pretty obnoxious when it comes to our school spirit and I'm proud to say it. Um, we have 38 different faiths represented on campus. I think you will find that um, we want you to be the best you possible, whether that means you are Catholic, some, some other religion or spirituality, or you just want to figure out what that means, or that's not part of your life. That's totally fine. We want to be able to support you. Our mission and ministry team do, does a fantastic job of doing so. Um, like I said, our average class size is 23. 82% of our students come from 200 miles away or further. So if you're not very close to Spokane, you are in the overwhelming majority. Uh, because students come from so far away, that means that they don't go home on the weekends. Uh, we're not a commuter campus, which means that community really does have a chance to build over the weekend, not just during the week. 63% of our students study abroad. Uh, I highly encourage it. I went to Florence, Italy for a semester and was a very formative part of my Gonzaga experience. And we have over 140 clubs and organizations on campus that help you uh, potentially, you know, test your leadership, your organizational skills, while also being able to, you know, be in a group of something that you're passionate about, whether that's one of our cultural clubs, um, pre-professional clubs, our club sports, my personal favorite, the Harry Potter Club. Um, they play uh, Quidditch out on the rec field and actually have to run around with a broom between their legs. So it's very entertaining to watch. Um, I'd say our, our students are very active. 55% will play some sort of intramural during their four years. And we do over 100, our students do over 150,000 hours of community service annually. You'll see some of our resources over here. I think a lot of that contributes to why um, our students stay at Gonzaga. 92% are back for their second year from health and counseling to our Lincoln LGBTQ plus resource center and university, or Unity Multicultural Education Center. So whoever you are and however you identify, you're not only welcomed on campus, but you're supported and have space um, dedicated to you. 
We're top 20 in the nation for undergraduate teaching, which I think really shows why our professors are here. Um, at the end of the day, your professors are here to teach and potentially even do research with undergraduate students and really be accessible to you. Um, I had a professor who was like, yeah, if you ever have a question, just text me. So I texted her the night before class and she got me, uh, uh, helped me out quite a bit on my study guide the night before test. And about 61% of our students will do an internship in their four years. So again, that idea of hands-on learning and learning by doing is very prevalent. Spokane, Washington, you can see where the pin's at. We are on the eastern edge of the state near the Idaho border. Second biggest city in the state, I always like to say we're a smaller city feel. Um, with big city resources. We're very close to outdoor um, opportunities, whether that's skiing in the winter, hiking and backpacking throughout the year, river rafting, so on and so forth. So how can you be a Zag? We are on the common application. We have one, just one deadline, December 1st. Um, we look at six things. We look at your grades, your curriculum, and this is online so you don't have to remember it. Uh, grades, curriculum, test scores if you decide to submit those, um, extra, extracurricular activities, your test scores, or sorry, um, your teacher recommendations, and, um, and the last one, it's slipping my mind, but also an important part of the, uh, the application process. If you're not sure if you should submit your test scores or not, you can see the, uh, the middle 50% for ACT and SAT down below. If you fall in the middle 50%, um, you're probably good to submit those. If you are interested in, uh, the nursing or engineering programs, you, you do want to list that as your main academic interest as they are direct entry programs. We also have admission interviews for students that are at or below a 3.2, those are encouraged, but our, all students are welcome to do that. It's a great way to get connected with the admission staff one-on-one. -on -one. Um, as a private university, when you see that total cost, it's gonna raise your eyebrows a little bit. All students are considered for merit scholarships when they apply. Um, there's also separate application-based um, <clears throat> Uh, scholarships that are due by January 1st that you can apply for as well. Beyond that, if you fill out the FAFSA by December 1st, that's going to let us know if you qualify for any need-based aid. If you're unable to fill out the FAFSA for whatever reason, we do have the needs analysis form uh, that other students can fill out as well. 98% of our students will receive some sort of financial aid, so at the end of the day, it's very, very unlikely that you will be paying the final, the, the sticker cost. Remember, sticker cost is almost never final cost. Um, I'll throw my, my email in the chat here shortly. Um, but if you have any interest in, in Gonzaga at all, please don't hesitate to reach out and uh, get connected with us. Thank you very much for that presentation. Up next, we have St. Joseph's University. Hello, thank you everyone for having us. Um, my name is Sophia Fayas. I am an admission counselor at St. Joseph's University located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, just outside of Center City, Philadelphia. Uh, my contact information is on this slide at the very beginning, but I will be sure to add it in the chat as well. So St. Joseph's University, as I mentioned, we are located just outside of Center City, Philadelphia. Um, we are a Jesuit liberal arts institution um, with about 4,100 undergraduate students representing 44 states and 35 countries. Um, we really do have a strong commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion um, with a focus, you know, basically saying to all and uh, to, to any and all students that, you know, regardless of your background, race, ethnic, um, faith backgrounds, sexual orientation, gender identity, um, um, basically anything and everything we welcome it and we want students to really embrace one another, um, but embrace themselves individually as well. We have a very strong student centered education with an average class size of about 24 students and an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio um, with individual faculty advising and research opportunities. So students really will have the opportunity to connect one on one with their faculty members. Um, every single professor is required to offer office hours outside of class time. So professors will know you will know your name and you will have the opportunity to connect with them as well. And they could be really strong mentors for you. And just we really have a um, strong focus on building relationships at the university. Not only with fellow classmates, but with your faculty members and with staff on campus as well. In terms of our campus community and what our students are able to get involved in at the university, we have over 90 clubs and organizations ranging from academic-based groups, performance-based groups, affinity groups, service, Greek life, leadership, and athletics. We are division one school, 20 D1 sports, 10 men and 10 women teams that compete in the Atlantic 10 conference. Um, a lot of our division ones are offered as club sports as well, plus additional, and then we also have intramurals. So if you're interested in being involved athletically, there are plenty of options for students to, to take advantage of. 
In the class of 2020, about 92% of our students were employed in graduate school or involved in full-time service programs just within six months of graduation. And this is a number that we're really proud of at the university. Um, it shows that our students are able to take advantage of all of the resources that are available to them, even in the life of COVID, um, and really able to take that with them after graduation as well. And for students who are interested in pursuing various different, um, various majors and or minors, it's good to know that about 65% of graduates are double majors and or have a major minor combination. So while it's not a number to scare people into thinking, oh, I have to double major at St. Joseph's, it's a number there for you to realize I have the access and opportunities to do that if that is something that I plan to have as part of my career at the university. We have over 100 academic programs, majors and minors split across three different schools, our Hobbs School of Business, our College of Arts and Sciences, and our School of Health Studies and Education, all falling under one core curriculum, which we call our general education program. So within that, students are able to take courses that are specific to their major and discipline, but in other courses as well, theology, philosophy, mathematics, the sciences, the languages, the arts. So you're getting that well-rounded education kind of ties back to our Jesuit ideal of cura personalis, which is care for the whole person. Um, but it also allows students to have a, the opportunity to see, oh, I didn't know I had this such a strong interest in creative writing um, or in psychology or whatever the case may be. Some of our unique programs include actuarial science, food marketing, autism behavioral studies, um, computer science is one that has increased quite a bit in the last few years. Some of our new minors include graphic design, computational engineering, and applied physics, as well as a museum studies that is on the rise, which is a very exciting. And then we're also introducing a supply chain management major. It is currently offered as a minor, um, but something that will be introduced very shortly as a major as well. And we're also really pushing our accelerated program. So for students who are looking to get their um, bachelor and master's degree just within five years, you have quite a few opportunities to do so at St. Joseph's University, whether that be in biology, criminal justice, education, in, um, crim uh, I'm sorry, in computer science, quite a few options that are available to students and in a lot of the um, business majors as well. So ultimately, how can you apply to St. Joseph's University? We are on the Common App and we utilize our own SJU online application. We are test optional. We've been test optional for the last six, seven years or so. Um, so that has always been great in our application review process. We are major blind in the admission process as well. So if you are admitted to the university, you are essentially admitted to all university programs. You are automatically reviewed for merit-based scholarships as well. So there's no separate application for that. Important dates to keep in mind, um, early action and early decision are coming up on November 15th. So about a, a little bit over a month to send in your application. And then we also have early decision two and regular decision. Um, and ultimately, if you're thinking about test scores, but you're not really sure, this is something to keep in mind. Our middle 50% for the class of 2023 um, for GPA is a 336 to 401. Sorry, that's just a class of 2025. SAT is an 1170 to 1330 and ACT is a 26 to 31. We do have visits available to uh, visit campus at St. Joseph's and we highly encourage you do so. We do have a um, open house coming up this Sunday, not this Sunday, an upcoming Sunday this month, October 24th. Um, and we'd love to see you all on campus, but we also have Monday through Friday tours and select Saturdays and Sundays. Again, I will post my information in the chat if you have any questions and I am happy to help. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your presentation. Up next, we have Iona College. Wonderful, all right. I'll go ahead and share my screen with everyone as well. All right, well, welcome everyone. And thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Ray Garron. I'm our Associate Director for Admissions over at Iona College. Uh, I'm also a graduate of Iona. I studied business management as an undergraduate student and studied marketing and international business for my master's uh, and stayed for a full-time job. So first slide, I wanna show you a photo of our campus map just to give you an idea of, of where Iona is, what the layout looks like. Uh, we are located in New Rochelle, New York in Westchester County, just 30 minutes away from Grand Central New York City, 30 minutes away from Stanford, Connecticut as well. Uh, the city of New Rochelle itself is a suburban city. So what's really nice is that you do get the best of both worlds. During the daytime, you get the city feel, uh, but as the sun starts to set, you get the nice, cool, calm and relaxing feeling. As you take a look at our campus map, as you can see, everything is within 
walking distance. Uh, so you can walk to your classes, to the dorms, to the cafeteria, to the gym. Um, you won't have to worry about taking any shuttle buses uh, around campus. Just 3,300 undergraduate students, uh, 20 to 25 students in a class, and just a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. Uh, you won't find yourself in any lecture halls. They are regular sized classrooms and you will have that personalized attention where you will get to know your professors and your professors will get to know you. Looking at our academic programs, we are a liberal arts college. We do have a school of arts and science and a school of business. Within, a school, within our school of arts and sciences, we have programs such as biology, biochemistry, with pre-professional concentrations such as pre-medicine, pre-veterinary, pre-physiotherapy, to name a few. In addition to that, we also do have education, criminal justice, psychology, media and strategic communication, speech language pathology, just to name a few within our School of Arts and Sciences. Within our School of Business, we do offer programs such as management, marketing, finance, accounting, international business information systems. And we also have our entrepreneurship programs, which are interdisciplinary, where they connect both our School of Arts and Sciences and our School of Business. Now, I must say that it is an, an exciting time to be a part of the Iona community, uh, especially with the academics. Uh, we recently just partnered with New York Presbyterian Hospital where New York Presbyterian made a generous $20 million donation to build, in, to build a New York Presbyterian Iona School of Health Sciences. And that's something that will be up and running within the next couple of months uh, by, the, by the time you all start college next year. Um, additionally, we also uh, recently renovated our business building. The photo on the top right-hand side is a photo of our brand new business building. We were able to double it in size. It's a 64,000 square feet building, and it has all of the technology that you would want in a classroom to have that enhanced learning experience. Photo on the bottom right is our, or the third photo on the right hand side is our entrepreneurship center. I'm um, also a new space on campus for our students. Uh, we recently just purchased an entire other campus as well, just five minutes away uh, to further expand our academics and to offer more space for our students to participate uh, in a variety of different clubs, club sports, activities, things of that nature. In addition to that, we also do have dual degree programs where you can earn your bachelor's and your master's all within five years. And we have joint degree programs for law, uh, pharmacy, dentistry, and osteopathic medicine as well. 94% uh, of our students are employed or enrolled in graduate school within six months of graduating. Again, we're just 30 minutes away from Stanford, Connecticut, 30 minutes away from New York City. So when it's time to look for those internships and those jobs, you're next to two major cities. You're not just limited to the summer. You can have those internship opportunities uh, during the school year as well. We have a career development center that works with our students very closely to ensure that they are successful, not just during their time at Iona, but post uh, undergrad as well. Some of the logos that you see there are examples of where our students have gone uh, in recent years. Living on campus, we have seven residence halls. We guarantee housing all four years. The majority of our residence halls were built in the 2000s, so they are modern. A uh, fun fact, they are all air conditioned. No matter what room you're living in, there is air conditioning, especially when you move in uh, during the warmer months. Uh, and we do have suite style housing, communal style housing, and we have apartment style housing as well. We have more than 80 clubs on campus, more than 450 activities going on per year, uh, everything ranging from academic to multicultural clubs, Greek life. Uh, we have a pipe band, a pep band, performing arts. Service work is a big part of our campus community as well, where students do more than 90,000 service hours per year. Um, so chances are, if you're looking to get involved with something, uh, you'll certainly find it at Iona. In addition to that, we have 21 Division I athletic programs. All of the sports that you see there are represented under our, our, under our Division I sports. Um, our teams are very well accomplished. Our men's basketball team have won the MAC championship uh, for the last four to five years consecutively. Our men's soccer team have won MAC championships recently. We recently just renovated our uh, men's and women's basketball courts and our women's volleyball court. It's now 360 seating, looks like an arena there as well. The application process, if you are considering applying to Iona, we are on the Common App, so you can utilize the Common application to apply. In terms of materials that we do require, we're looking for a high school transcript, uh, looking for about an, for a solid B average, so if you're in that 3.4 ballpark, um, then just know academically speaking, uh, you will uh, be a competitive applicant. In addition to that, we are looking for two recommendation letters, typically from a guidance counselor or a teacher. We're also looking for your college essay. Uh, we do take a holistic approach when reviewing your application. Uh, we know that you're not just the number, you are a whole person, and we want to get uh, to know you as a whole person as well. Um, we are completely test optional, so you don't have to worry about SATs or ACTs. 
We do have three deadlines. We have our early decision deadline, which is a binding one. That is December 1st. Students who apply early decision are notified by December 15th. We have early action, which is December 15th. That is not binding, but you will find out uh, by January. And then we have regular decision, which is February 15th. And then on my last slide, 100% of our students are eligible to receive scholarships and financial aid. Scholarships range between 10 and $25,000, and we offer financial aid as well. With that being said, tuition and fees are about 42,000 and change. Room and board is about 17,000 and change. But keep in mind that the scholarships and the financial aid that you can receive will help offset um, some of those costs. And then last but not least, my contact information is there. We are on social media. Definitely give us a follow and we are doing tours seven days a week. So you are always welcome to visit campus. Thank you so much. And I'll put some of this information in the chat as well. Thank you very much for that presentation. As a reminder to our participants, if you guys have questions for any of the schools you're hearing from today, definitely don't hesitate to put those in the Q&A down below. Up next, Merrimack College. Francisco, we cannot hear you. Unfortunately, we still cannot hear you. This off and T, can you hear me now a little bit better? Yes, we can. All right, wonderful. So um, a little bit about Merrimack College is that uh, we do have a little bit more of a, a greater career. So we really try to focus on the student. So we provide them bigger scholarships, uh, stronger majors. Uh, we have uh, broad support for all of our employee success to uh, all of our programs. And then we kind of focus on a molar transformation. Um, so we're really a place where you can change the world. So a little bit, a little bit more information in regards to Merrimack itself. So. Uh, we're proud of the accolades that we've accomplished so far. And so you can see that we've been recognized in a couple of different magazines as well. And so uh, anything from the Princeton Review, anything from the U.S. News as well. Uh, Merrimack is making a mark as a premier regional college this past year. Uh, we jumped from 45 to 34 in the U.S. News ranking and we're, we're awarded number three most innovative in our region as well. And so at Merrimack, we're 4,000 students uh, undergrad strong, and then we have a couple of graduate programs as well. We're located 25 miles north of Boston, and then we have about 100 uh, programs and about five schools. Uh, those five schools range anywhere from the Gerard Business, uh, anything from the School of Health and Sciences, School of Liberal Arts, School of Science and Engineering, and also our Winston Educational and Social Policy School as well. Now, within Merrimack, you'll find that 73 of the students uh, live on campus. 21% um, typically kind of have a diversity here on campus as well. We are 24 teams Division I uh, sports as well. And then we have a student ratio of 16 to 1. Um, with that 16 to 1 ratio, you really get to know your professor. Uh, you get to kind of have a follow-up in case if something happens. Uh, typically, the professors are really good at making sure that you're attending classes and really getting the most out of your time here at Merrimack. Uh, we do have 90 plus clubs and murals and organizations within the campus as well. And our class average size is anywhere from 22 students. These are a little bit more breakdown of the um, five schools that we offer. The School of Business is probably one of our highest um, attended, most attended with 31% of our student body. School of Liberal Arts makes up the 92%. And then along with the School of Health and Sciences and then School of Science and Engineering. And lastly, the Winston School of Education and Policy as well. So within Merrimack College, um, we do have um, a program called our Double Warrior. What that is, is that you get the opportunity to start your graduate program 
while you're doing your undergrad. So what that means is that you'll get an accelerated application towards your graduate program and start that during your fourth year of your undergrad. This gives you the opportunity to really kind of focus on accelerating your track towards becoming a graduate um, within the graduate programs. And then we have the five schools that offer those particular programs as well. Now, within uh, Merrimack, we really kind of focus on the academic support uh, for you. We do have an academic success program that focuses on being able to kind of provide you some additional information. If there's an area, for example, in math or class that you're struggling with in math, you have a tutoring center and a tutor that is available to you to be able to kind of assist you towards that academia uh, area as well. Now, um, within the career options here at Merrimack, um, we have a top 4% or 10 year earnings rate. And then we do have 87% of our students participate in at least one internship and one co-op. 96% is the career outcome rate for the students in 2019 that graduate after nine months and have employment. These are some of the names in, of the employers that typically hire Merrimack students for undergrad and graduate degrees. Now, here at Merrimack, we're also focused on your career support along with academic support as well. We do utilize a burning glass technology to be able to kind of track the opportunities that are out there in real time. What that means is that we're pulling in information for a specific career path that any of the student wants to pursue to be able to give them a real life um, example of what they're going to earn. A lot of times that helps a lot of students kind of decide their major um, throughout their time here at Merrimack. Now, the way that that works is that during your first year, you'll receive your career advisor. Career advisors are given to all of the students in addition to their academic advisor. The second year, they'll discuss with you a little bit more of the track of being able to get exposure as a professional. Third year, you begin to utilize the burning glass insight. The fourth year, you become a little bit more hands-on with that burning glass uh, information and then begin to attend career fairs and complete internships. We are division one, and then we have, um, like I said, over 100 different uh, clubs and teams in regards to sports. We do have 60 plus organizations and clubs and 30 plus intramurals and club sports. These are just some of the examples of the activities that go on on campus as well. All of these uh, organizations are student run. So the students organize their presidents, the students organize their social cares, treasurers as well. And then the school just funds them. Now, if there's an academic or an organization that you don't see within Merrimack College, the school is more than happy to have you bring along three other people and then you can create a club of your own. Now, uh, within Merrimack College, the um, housing is guaranteed for all four years. We do have nine different resident buildings, all with free laundry facilities. And then we also do have a commuter student lounge. Uh, we have a guarantee on campus to be able to park there if you choose to commute to the school and also have a commuter student association and advisor to be able to kind of provide the students additional support as well. Now, 99% um, of our students received a grant or scholarship in 2021, and we already have set aside 85 million in institutional grants and scholarships to be awarded in the year of 2021 through 2022. Now, for Merrimack, the application, what that looks like is that you do have early decision day, November 15th, what that means is that if Merrimack College is your number one school, if that's your top choice, go ahead and apply for that. It does have you a binding contract to be able to have you apply and attend Merrimack College. Now, if you don't want to go into Merrimack College, we're not your number one choice. You may be your second or third. Um, I would say apply for the early action. That allows you to know early on when, if you get accepted to Merrimack, and also give you opportunity to kind of have um, a choice in your decision. The way to apply is that we are through the Common app as well. Uh, all we need is your secondary school report, the high school transcript from your counselor, and then letter recommendation. So at Merrimack, with the applications, we have no application fee, and we don't, um, we're test blind. We don't uh, take test scores. We haven't taken test scores, and that includes um, learning. 
and then the academic profile for our students is anywhere average about 3.3, but we do take anywhere uh, from 2.1, 2.5 and below up to the 3.5 and above scale. If you have any questions, um, I will go ahead and add my information to the chat as well, but these are just our general information. Um, the one social media that will take to follow us will be Facebook. A lot of times, uh, students, freshmen particularly, when they join the Facebook team, they get access to different events that happen throughout the campus. And also, it's a good way to be able to get familiar with some of the other students that potentially will be attending in your class. Thank you so much for your presentation. Up next, we have Bellarmine University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Kircher, and I'm the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Admissions at Bellarmine. I'm also a two-time Bellarmine grad, so very fond of the university as well, and I've been back there in my current role for about four years. So Bellarmine is located in Louisville, Kentucky, um, and we're an inclusive Catholic university. We strive to educate students, mind, body, and spirit for meaningful lives, rewarding careers, ethical leadership, and service to improve the human condition. We were founded in 1950 as an all-boys Catholic school. In 1968, we merged with Ursuline Sisters, which was an all-girls school at the time, um, to form the university that we are today. Um, we have close to about 2,500 undergrads, a little closer to about 3,500 total students in terms of things, 27,000 alumni. Um, we just recently made the transition to the Division I. We're part of the ASUN Conference. We have 22 sports that are competing at that level. Um, we were recently uh, the number one Catholic college in Kentucky, um, number one Kentucky school with graduate wages after 10 years, and the same thing on the mid-salary range as well, too. Um, so location is a big part of who we are. We are located in the heart of a major city, but we're tucked away in a nice little suburban neighborhood called the Highlands. Um, think about all the restaurants, the nightlife, the music, the art, the parks, um, anything that's fun and exciting is happening around us. Um, there's plenty to do both on campus, but as well as off. Um, and we're truly that small school in the heart of a major city. Um, if you stay on campus and, and don't go outside our walls, you would think you're kind of in the middle of uh, a wonderful utopia. And then right around the corner is anything and everything that you wanna do and participate in and in a major city as well too. Uh, and some consider Louisville uh, the gateway to the South. Um, and if you are a Louisville native like myself, you say it without moving, moving your lips. It is not Louisville or Louisville, it's Louisville, Kentucky, um, which is where we're essentially located. So this is kind of us at a glance in terms of things. Um, number one college location in Kentucky. Um, as I mentioned, we are a smaller school to a medium-sized school. Average class size is about 19 students. We have a 12 to one student ratio. Um, surprisingly enough too, about 38% of our students are first generation. So student support's a big part of who we are, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes. And then again, about 20% of our, our students are athletes. Um, we have over 90% student groups on campus. So there's literally anything and everything um, for anybody to do on campus, depending on what that interest may be. And the nice thing about that too, if you can't find that organization or that group, um, we also encourage our students to start their own. So it's not too complicated of a process. And that's why we're able to offer so many opportunities away year to year in terms of things as well too. So learning obviously is a big part of who we are. So 70, we have over 70 academic programs um, with another dozen or so pre-professional programs, and then a handful of um, early entry graduate programs as well too, which is really awesome. We are a liberal arts-based university. Um, so we're very well known for health sciences, um, psychology, um, and hard sciences, as well as our school of education. Um, but the vast majority of our students come in as undeclared, um, which is perfectly fine and awesome, and we strongly encourage it. The liberal arts core allows our students to have a better understanding of um, the areas of interest that they wanna pursue, be able to explore those areas of interest earlier in their academic career and find the right fit for them as well too. A big part of the experiences and the reason we're able to have so success with our graduates is the fact that we offer hands-on experiences. Um, so anything and everything from student teaching um, to research, um, to hands-on clinical experiences, to internships, um, in major companies, both in the city and around the country as well too, which is really important to us. Um, student support is a big part of who we are and why we're able to have the success that we have for our graduates. 
Um, we very much believe in getting you out there and doing anything and everything that you want, but we have those folks that are around you to help support you and push you in the right direction. You work with your own advisors from day one. Um, you have your own career advisors as well too that start working with you as early as your sophomore year. Um, we have a number of job shadowing opportunities as well as career advice and support to help you figure out the right fit for you in terms of your next steps. Um, if, that, if that's entering the job market right away, if that's going to graduate school, if that's a combination of both, we're here to help you. We also have an honors program um, that offers students um, a more collective approach to their education. Like I mentioned our liberal arts core allows students um, to really take charge and ownership in the classroom. Honors program allows those additional steps to take place as well as a thesis opportunity upon your graduation. Equity, inclusion, social justice are at the heart of who Bellarmine is. Thomas Merton was a big influence on our campus. Um, his center is located at Bellarmine. His works are a big part of um, our instruction and our classroom philosophy. Um, so giving back to the community, helping those around us, both on our campus and the community, the nation and the world are a big part of who we are. Um, so community service, is gonna be a big part of your experience while on campus and a part of your programs as well too. Um, as you can see, 99% of our students um, were in a career field of their choice or graduate school program of their choice six months out, so the class of 2020. 92% were in a field uh, of their choice, which is really awesome. So again, that academic support starting from day one in the classroom, from our faculty members, your academic advisors, your peer coaches, uh, and then more importantly, our career center helping you sort through those choices and those opportunities that are available to you, as well as those experiential experiences outside the classroom allow for our students to have the success that they have upon graduation. So our, our, our pledge to affordability is a big part of who we are. Being a private school, um, tuition and fees, room and board, you're looking at about $53,000 a year um, when everything's said and done. Books and um, materials are included in that cost as well. 100% of our incoming first year students um, receive merit-based scholarships. Um, for this incoming class, that average scholarship is right around $28,000. Those scholarships range anywhere from $18,000 to about $30,000 per year, and they are renewable for up to four years. Um, and then with the financial aid piece as well, too, um, we're able to offer an additional, plus about $10,000, which made our comprehensive packages close to about $39,000, which is really awesome. Um, and then we have a public price promise, meaning um, we'll, you will not pay any more than the flagship university in your state to attend Bellarmine. So what do you want to do, need to do if you want to apply to Bellarmine? Um, Common App, you can find us there. We also have our own application at bellarmine.edu. Um, really, our two big deadlines are November 1 for early action uh, and then February 1st for a regular admission. So um, we are test optional. Um, our median test score range between about 25 and a 27 for our students. GPA is about 3.7. Um, so you have the choice to submit those test scores or not. In addition to your application, all we need is a letter of recommendation and your transcripts. Um, and we will make that decision right away. And your merit award will be included in your admissions letter to Bellarmine as well too. Um, my contact information is there below. I'll drop it in the chat as well. Feel free to follow us on social uh, and reach out and come visit campus. We offer a number of different experiences. Love to have you on campus. But we also have a number of virtual experiences as well too. Thank you guys so much and have a great evening. Thank you for your presentation. Our final institution for this session is Holy Cross College. Hi everyone, can you all hear me and see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, I'm Dulce Macias. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Holy Cross College. My colleague Colin will be sending my contact information and any links through the chat um, as I give my presentation. Um, and I am here today to talk about why you should make Holy Cross your home as well. We are a small Catholic liberal arts college of about 500 students located in Notre Dame, Indiana, right across the street from the University of Notre Dame and St. Mary's College, forming the tri-campus community. As such, uh, students here can participate in, um, as such students here are part of a supportive tight-knit community here at Holy Cross College with extra personalized attention, while at the same time having access to a larger college community with more than 500 clubs and activities, um, as well as opportunities to take classes at St. Mary's and Notre Dame. 
Um, so a student can go to mass in the Basilica every day or sit in the student section at Notre Dame football games um, or audition for plays at St. Mary's and Notre Dame. Yeah. And then our mission here at Holy Cross College is to educate and form global citizens with the competence to see and the courage to act. So we do this by forming all of our students as scholars, citizens, leaders, and disciples through our classes, activities, and especially our curriculum called the core curriculum. Some of the courses that all of our students take are focused on the common good, where you learn about what is the common good and how can you use your unique gifts and talents to give back to the common good and the communities around you. Um, um, and students do that by volunteering at a local organization. Other core courses focus on global perspectives and issues. You can take the course one step further by participating in local immersions or studying abroad in London, Ireland, Rome, or Italy. And we are one of less than 15 colleges in the US that require all students to participate in an internship before graduating. So all students before graduating have hands-on experience in the desired career. Um, as part of this, all students meet with the career office to go over the resume and post-grad plans. Um, so that's something that's super helpful for all of our students and also take career assessments, learn what kind of jobs are out there for your passions and your interests. Is students also present a senior capstone where you talk about what you have done here, how much you've grown, where you started, and where you plan to go. Um, it's a great um, activity or it's a great um, time to reflect um, and see how much you have grown and where you, where, uh, where you are going next. We offer nine majors, the most popular which um, are business, biology, and psychology. Five of our majors can be completed in three years on an accelerated track, so you can save time and money. We also offer 17 minors, the newest one being computer science, as well as partnerships with graduate programs at Notre Dame and St. Mary's, where you can get your bachelor's here in three years and get your master's there in one year. Um, and this includes a master's in business, applied math, or data science and data science. Being a small school, you get the small class sizes with lots of personalized attention. And you'll notice that all of our professors are truly passionate about teaching and helping everyone, um, every one of you succeed and thrive in college and after college in life. Many of our students consider one of the professors as a mentor by their second year. Um, if you are interested in engineering or pre-med, we do have a partnership with the University of Notre Dame called the Driscoll Scholars Program where you get your associates at Holy Cross College in two years and your bachelor's in engineering or pre-health um, from Notre Dame in two or three years. I highly recommend you apply as soon as you can for this program since there are a limited number of spots. Um, another big part of our life here, of our college here, is that um, Holy Cross College is a Catholic college for the modern world. We are distinctly Catholic and open to all. All students, regardless of their religious background, are welcome at Holy Cross College, and about three quarters of our current students identify as Catholic. For those who would like to partic participate in faith-based activities, our campus ministry is one of the most active programs on campus. Students can participate in daily and weekend masses, um, theology on tap, spes unica, retreats, and pilgrimages to notable sites with the congregation of Holy Cross. Uh, Holy Cross is a residential school, uh, so most of our students live on campus in the six dorms. Students are required to live on campus their first two years, but they may stay for all four years. All on-campus students have a meal plan, and our dining hall is located in the same building as a couple of the residence halls um, and the chapel. So um, that's especially helpful during the winter um, when you don't have to leave the building. A bit about our application process. You can apply to Holy Cross College through the Common App or our own application called Scholars to Saints, which can be found on our website. There is no application fee, and this year we are test and essay optional. Our applications opened August 1st, and November 1st is our first deadline. It's a non-binding early action deadline. After November 1st, it is rolling admissions, which means that once you apply, you'll hear back from us after three weeks. Um, we take a, very, a holistic approach towards every, um, every application, so um, we don't have a minimum GPA. A, we look at your, uh, at your activities, um, letters of recommendations if you'd like to send them in, 
at your writing from the short paragraphs that we asked you to submit about why you want to come to Holy Cross College um, and your grades as well. Um, uh, I also recommend students to apply test optional because if a test, uh, if your test scores help you, we will take them into account. If they don't, um, we will not. Uh, all students who apply are automatically considered for our merit scholarship um, merit, um, and signature scholarships that range from 8,000 to 20,000 a year. The deadline for those scholarships is February 15th. And um, you're also automatically considered for need-based financial aid as long as you apply for the free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA. And um, for students who are from Indiana, uh, we have a special program for those who are receiving the max or close to the maximum amount of state and federal aid where we meet your tuition fees. Um, uh, also, uh, the average financial aid award last year exceeded 28,000 without um, loans. Um, and that is all. We are very excited to support you on your path to Holy Cross College. Please reach out to us with any questions um, and sign up for a visit. Okay. Thank you. All right, we have come to the end of our programming this evening. So thank you everyone for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. And we would appreciate any feedback you can provide to us. We also encourage you to go back out to the schedule. There's another hour of sessions up next and there are a lot of schools waiting to, to present to you. You'll also be able to find this session's recording as well as any other recordings from this evening at strivescan.com slash NCCAA. Again, thank you for joining us and have a great evening.